Allow me this opportunity to welcome you to the last installment of the ASU Lecture Series program for fall semester 2014. My name is Mrs. Deidre Williams and I am the coordinator for the Center for Teaching, Learning, and Scholarship and I will be presiding over your program this morning. I would like to ask at this time if all of my gentlemen would please remove their headgear and if you would silence all electronic devices, remove your earbuds, and give the stage your un undivided attention. Can we agree to do that this morning? Yes. Are y'all glad to be in the number? Yes. No, maybe a little bit. You should be. Everybody registered? Yes. Oh, that sounds a little shaky. Well, be sure to do that when you leave the program today, okay? If you would, if you take a look at your program, we're going to proceed with our program as it is printed with our introduction of speaker by Ms. Anaya Hopewell, who is a freshman early childhood education major here at Albany State University and is also a member of the Velma Fudge Grant Honors Program, followed by our keynote speaker. Good morning, my name is Anaya Hopewell. I am a freshman early childhood education major and also a member of the Velma Fudge Grant Honors Program. And this morning I have the esteemed pleasure of introducing the speaker. This morning, I am introducing Dr. A. Zachary Faison, Jr. He is a native of Atlanta, Georgia, and the son of Alderman Faison and Dr. Jewel J. Faison. At only 34 years young, Dr. Faison's career exploits include distinguished professional experiences as both a practicing attorney and a higher education executive leader and administrator. A magna cum laude graduate of Albany State University in Albany, Georgia, Dr. Faison earned a bachelor degree of arts in English in 2002. While a student at ASU, he was an ASU Aaron Brown Presidential Scholar, a member of the ASU Velma Fudge Grant Honors Program, an ASU Merit Scholar, a Dwight D. Eisenhower National Fellow, an inductee of the Alpha Kappa Mu National Honor Society, an inductee of the Sigma Tau Delta National English Honor Society, and upon graduation, he was awarded for being the highest ranking student in the university's Department of English and Modern Languages. Post ASU, Dr. Faison earned a Juris Doctorate degree from the University of Georgia School of Law. Currently, Dr. Faison serves as the Vice President for the Student Affairs and Enrollment Management at Virginia Union University in Richmond, Virginia. He maintains responsibility for the direct administrative oversight and management of the university's Division of Student Affairs and Enrollment Management. Although Dr. Faison has received many honors in his professional career, one particular milestone was being honored by Albany State, University's, Albany State University when it included him in its inaugural publication of the top 50 ASU alumni under 50. He has been blissfully married for seven years to the former Ty C. White, whom he first met at ASU. She is a K-12 administrator and educator. He is an avid sports fan, a music lover, a fitness enthusiast, and he is exceptionally proud of his little sister who's a third year PhD at Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia. Would you please join me in welcoming Dr. A. Zachary Faison, Jr. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much, Ms. Hopewell. Uh, ASU is supposed to be a no flex zone, right? <laughs> right, right. That kind of sounded like we were flexing a little bit, a little bit, right? But at ASU, we, we can flex a little bit. Y'all, y'all gonna have to, y'all gonna have to open up for me. Smile. I know it's early, but you gotta be here, and so we're gonna try to make this as enjoyable as possible. Okay? I know it's Thursday. I work with students day in and day out, so I know it was a lot to get you here, but you're here now. So you might as well kind of let your, let your proverbial hair down and, and, and let's, let's, let's have some, some fun. Hopefully maybe you'll learn uh, a little something that you can take with you on your journey uh, as you continue to matriculate here at Albany State. Um, I am certainly proud and grateful um, for the investment made in me by this uh, particular institution. As you heard, um, I am a proud graduate of, of Albany State University and I am unabashed and apologetic when I say that in my book, Albany State University is indeed the best university in the world. Yes. 
uh, we are world class. If uh, a golden ram hasn't done it, um, it, 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 it can't be done because we are world class. We achieve uh, at the very highest levels in all, all uh, different measures and in, in every different professional endeavor that you can possibly think of. So ours is truly a very venerable legacy and that is rich in progress and accomplishment. And as freshman students, each of you are now a part of the Golden Ram tradition, a tradition of both, again, superlative excellence and preeminence. It's a tradition that is in the Latin, and it's something that I try to use with my students is called nulli secundus. In the Latin, that means second to none. And so that personifies Albany State University. And so it's within that context that, again, I consider it both an honor and a privilege to have an opportunity uh, to stand before you today, again, as a very proud alumnus, and along with the host of distinguished persons um, who have been a part and will continue be, to be a part of this lecture series um, to welcome you, particularly as freshman students, to what I consider to be the uh, educational crown jewel of Southwest Georgia here at Albany State University. But before I begin my formal remarks, you know, you kind of have to you have to do the protocol. Y'all understand what, what, what that means? You, you, you got you to thank the, the proper folks. And so, um, of course, I would be remiss if I didn't at least pause and acknowledge and thank our interim president, Dr. Arthur Dunning, in his absence um, for his tremendous leadership and vision um, for our university. And of course, um, to the members of the executive cabinet and all of the outstanding and scholarly faculty and staff um, who are dedicated and serve daily in making ASU such a very, very special Place. And of course to you, the students. Um, without you, uh, none of us uh, would be here. And so it's very, very important that we thank you uh, for choosing Albany State. Um, you could have chosen many places to be, but you made the choice to attend Albany State University. And we are very, very proud uh, and thankful that you chose to be a part of the Golden Ram family. And so also as a 2002 graduate of the ASU Honors Program, and, and you all look uh, resplendent in your shirts and, 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 and the ascots this morning. I was, I was kidding with the students earlier. I said, we didn't have that when I, when I, when I came through, but, but, but we're, moving, we're moving forward. But um, I also want to thank and acknowledge, of course, Dr. Shelton. I think he's here. I saw him here, um, who, who serves uh, in a role in leading our Honors Program here at Albany State, and I want to thank him and acknowledge him. And of course, I, I've got to give a special shout out to my classmate. Uh, Mrs. Deidre Williams. She was, she was Ms. Mrs. Harvey when I knew her as a student, but of course she just celebrated some recent nuptials, so I do want to thank uh, Mrs. Williams for inviting me here um, and allowing me the opportunity to speak with you um, this morning. And because I uh, especially value the gift of life, uh, I must thank and acknowledge the vessel through which uh, I was blessed to be given life in the form of my beloved mother, Dr. Jewel Faison, who supports me uh, endlessly. And she's here this morning, so I just want to acknowledge her for, for being here. She lives here in Albany, and so I wanted to thank her for coming out. Uh, I flew in from Richmond yesterday evening, and she promised me she would be here, and she's here, seated on the front row, and so I appreciate her for, for being here. And lastly, but certainly not least, because I want to go home this evening, um, I, I would be remiss if I didn't also thank and acknowledge the real wind beneath my wings uh, who keeps me encouraged and holds me down as my homie lover friend, as LL Cool J would say, uh, my life partner, my beautiful queen, my everything, my wife, Mrs. Ticey Faison. And as I mentioned earlier, ASU has truly given me everything in my life, and it's kind of, an, uh, it's kind of a nostalgic moment, if you'll allow me for a minute, um, because this fall actually marks 13 years uh, that I first laid eyes on my wife here on the campus of Albany State University uh, in the lobby of Wiley Hall. Uh, the old residence, is, is Wiley still operational? It's an office building now, but it was it, at that time it was a women's residence facility, and I first laid eyes on her there, and, and ooh, it was it was on and popping after that. Uh, so uh, indeed, I'm forever indebted to Albany State University because truly it gave me the very best thing that ever happened to me in my life. Um, so now, if you're anything like I was when I started college back in the fall of 1998, that sounds like a long time ago now. Um, yes, at that time, we were all collectively no-limit soldiers saying, uh, na 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 that, that, was, that, was, that was my era. Uh, and so you're probably sitting in this auditorium feeling a million different emotions uh, and asking yourself a million different questions. Namely, perhaps, how long is this dude going to talk? 
uh, not too terribly long, I promise. Uh, you may be saying, well, what are they serving in the calf today? Is today fried chicken? Was that Wednesday? Fried chicken Wednesday well, at Virginia Unionist on Thursday. So I knew we were, we were in the fried chicken zone. So you may be thinking about that. You might be thinking about, you know, what, what's going to be popping on the Real Housewives of Atlanta tonight. You know, you got the, the ongoing saga with Phaedra and Apollo. So what's going to be the next step there? Um, why is it so cold outside? Or why in the world is this ASU 1201 uh, course scheduled for so early in the morning? So, so those are maybe some of the thoughts that you might be thinking about, but you may be being a little bit more introspective. You're nearing the end of your very first semester here at Albany State, and so you may be asking yourself, did you make the right choice in coming to Albany State? And I want to let you know without a doubt uh, that you did. Uh, you may also be asking, is this worth the sacrifices that my family and I have made to get here? And I want you to know that it's absolutely worth it. And most certainly, I want you to be confident that you are not an admissions mistake. In fact, I can assure each and every one of you that you are here because you deserve to be here. And you're here to bring something new and exciting to this very unique and diverse learning community. So indeed, your time here at ASU will be a period of great transformation for you. And as an example, let me just kind of briefly share with you um, how my college days at Albany State really transformed me. As you all heard earlier, I'm a native of Atlanta. A uh, product of the Atlanta public school systems, but I lived in Decatur, Zone 6. Any, anybody? No. All right, Zone 6. All right, so we in the house. <laughs> Decatur, Georgia, right off Candler Road, Panthersville. Y'all feel me? Anybody? All right, okay. So I got a few folks. Um, and so I arrived at ASU, and I, I have to, I'm, 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 I keep it real, so I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I arrived at ASU, and I cried literally all the way down I 75 South. Uh, I did not want to come to Albany State. Uh, as far as I was concerned, Albany, Georgia was a little country town with nothing in it. All of my friends were going to all these exotic, far off places like Washington, D.C. or New York City or, you know, someplace on a beach near Florida and Miami or something like that. And so the thought of coming to Albany, Georgia was terribly depressing and, and disappointing for me. Um, so keep it real. Uh, but I didn't realize it at the time, but I was terribly, terribly wrong. I've never been so wrong. In fact, I grew up in Atlanta, born and raised in Atlanta, but I've made Albany, Georgia my permanent home. So that just kind of gives you some insight into how this place transformed my life. But nevertheless, at the time, I was convinced that I would spend a semester here and at the very most a year. And then I was going to, I had made up my mind, I was going to transfer to a bigger, better school. However, that all changed in the spring of my freshman year when I encountered two people who forever uh, changed the course of my life in the form of former Albany State University President Dr. Portia Holmes Shields and also a then faculty member and current university council Dr. Nyota Tucker. They convinced me and showed me in no uncertain terms that Albany State University was indeed the right place for me. I had been sent here. It was not by happenstance, it was providence that I came uh, to Albany State University. And more specifically, those two persons took an con a concerted and very personal interest in me and my development and academic success that will, went very, well beyond um, the status quo. They demonstrated and delivered a kind of unique pedagogy that Dr. Shields used to try to articulate kind of like this. She would say, it's higher education excellence with a personal touch. And convinced I was going to be the next Stuart Scott or Bob Costas, I was sure that I wanted a career in journalism. And so that's why I majored in English. And having worked at CNN at the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, uh, it was actually Dr. Shields uh, who assisted in helping me uh, garner a paid internship as an 18-year-old freshman here at Albany State um, at the Albany Herald, a position I held all four years that I was here at Albany State. I covered uh, Albany State sports, football, basketball, all darting stuff, all high school sports. I got that opportunity as an 18-year-old freshman and did that for four years. And indeed, that was a very imperative and very meaningful experience in my overall development. And so as such, I would implore and encourage you as students uh, to seek out professional career opportunities beyond the classroom. And no, you don't need to do it. Well, you should have done it yesterday, but if you, had, if you didn't do it yesterday, you don't need to wait till tomorrow. This is something that you need to do today. Don't wait. Winners start early. I want you to remember that. Winners always start early. 
I want you to take Ursula Burns, for example. While growing up in the projects of New York City with two siblings, Burns said that her single mother often told her, where you are is not who you are. Burns took those words to heart when she started at Xerox in 1980 as a 20-year-old mechanical engineering summer intern. From there, she was hired by Xerox and worked her way up from positions in product development and planning to, to the executive assistant and a vice president. And in 2009, she became the very first African-American woman to head a, fi a Fortune 500 company when she was named the company's chief executive officer. So you see, in today's expanding and increasingly competitive global marketplace, it simply isn't good enough to just earn good grades. That's good. That's great. I want you all to do that. And by all means, uh, you should expend every effort to earn high grades. But students, let me tell you, in 2014, you must combine the function to perform at an exemplary high level in your academic performance with the equally as important need to ascertain some tangible professional development and or career experience. It's imperative. It's a must. Julius Caesar once said that above all things, experience is the teacher of all things. So in fact, to be ahead of the curve and to set the curve, which is what we go to Rams do, we don't, we're not ahead of the curve, we set the curve. You should be working towards securing a summer internship, an externship, or a research opportunity now, today. Don't wait, it's something that needs to be done today. Ask your professors about internship opportunities which, which, with which they are familiar. Uh, visit the Office of Career Services. If you don't know where it is, find out where it is. Mrs. Williams, I'm sure, can tell you where it is. Uh, Ms. Hill can tell you. Uh, Dr. Shelton can tell you. Folks, there are people around here that can point you in the right, in the right direction. After all, that's exactly what they're here for. They're here for you. And so indeed for me, it was Dr. Nayota Tucker that first planted the seed of a legal career in my mind as I sat in her honors government course as a freshman student. I'm not sure if she's still teaching uh, that course at all, but I'm telling you, uh, I was so impressed by and awestruck by her stern directness with us and her refusal to, to, to lower the standard. She would not lower her standard. She had high expectations for us and you were going to come to class, you were going to do the work, or you were going to get out of there. Point blank period. She would not lower the standard. She was regal, she was refined, and she was tough as nails. And a little known secret about her that a lot of students don't know, and I didn't know this because she's a, a very, very, she's not a boastful person. I didn't know this until I went to the University of Georgia uh, School of Law, that she is the very first African American woman to graduate from the University of Georgia School of Law. That's the kind of scholarship, that's the kind of, 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 of professional uh, 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 professionals that we have on this campus. And you all as students, you all need to take uh, opportunities and, and learn from these resources. Take every advantage possible. The fact that we have someone like that, that has served this university and continues to serve this university, is a great resource and opportunity for, for you all as students to learn from them. So she really challenged me in a way that I frankly didn't think that I would or could be challenged. She demanded my best and wouldn't let me settle for giving anything less. I soon learned that this was simply the ASU way. So with Dr. Shields and Dr. Tucker as seminal parts of my support structure, I truly began to soar. I earned the opportunity and was selected for, uh, was selected to spend the next summer uh, as a uh, member, uh, as a student in the Florida State University Summer Law Program for undergraduate students where I spent the summer in an actual law school setting where I got the opportunity to, to learn and to explore and study the law and learn whether really a legal career would be something in which I would be interested in. And here was the best part of the program. Once I was admitted, the program, including the room, the board, and all the instruction was absolutely free. So these are the kinds of programs that you need to be endeavoring to find out about. Um, again, it's not something that you can wait on. You need to combine what you're doing in the classroom with some real world experiences. So a legal career, that certainly was not in my plan. As, as I mentioned earlier, I was going to be Stuart Scott. I was going to be on ESPN. Uh, but, but, but ASU and my experiences here and the people that I met and the people that poured into my life and invested into me caused my experience to, to transform my life. And so a legal career was definitely not in the plans, but guess what? It happened. It happened. 
And I did finally get to Washington, D.C. As you all heard earlier, uh, we, we play second fiddle to no one here at Albany State University. So by the time I was a senior, I was selected as a uh, national Dwight D. Eisenhower Transportation Fellow. And upon the invitation of the United States Secretary of Transportation, I got to spend a week in the nation's capital with other student fellows from the nation's most renowned colleges and universities, from Stanford University, Yale, Harvard, you name them, they were there. But guess who was sitting right next to them? A golden ram. So again, we, t we play second fiddle to no one. We are the best. We want you to be the best in everything that you, you got, you, you got to represent that blue and gold and represent it proudly. And so uh, I imagine that some of you are just like me and that you arrived here at ASU knowing exactly or thinking that you knew exactly what you wanted to study and that you intend to, to stay focused on that uh, and, and you're going to move in, in that direction. And that's great. Stay with it. But I also strongly encourage you to be open to new ideas, experiences, and directions. You're learning from the greatest in the field and, you're the, and, and, and with the best and brightest surrounding you. And you will undoubtedly be challenged to think about new topics or at least view old topics in very new ways. So I implore you to fight against the temptation of inflexibility. Be open to new ideas. Be flexible. And more than anything, do not limit your own possibilities. Know that all things are possible. Your dreams, your goals, and your aspirations are in fact possible. As a matter of fact, Muhammad Ali put it this way. He said that the word impossible is just a big word thrown around by small men who find it easier to live in the world they've been given than to explore the power they have to change it. Impossible is not a fact. It's an opinion. Impossible is not a declaration. It's a dare. Impossible is potential. Impossible is temporary. Impossible is nothing. And so I admonish you to explore and exploit every opportunity that Albany State University has to offer you, as I can promise you that your collegiate experience will inevitably be what it is that you make it. This is your life and your experience, so make it and make every day that you're here count. Okay, so I know it's still relatively early in the morning. And y'all are still kind of looking at me like, dude, you said you won't talk that long. It's been about 15, 16 minutes that you've been talking, so you know, can we move this forward a little bit? I'm getting there. But such that we can make it a little bit less stuffy, I'm gonna need you all to kind of participate with me. My, my mother is an educator, uh, and so if you all know anything about kind of ped pedagogy and, and teaching, a lot of times it, it ingratiates call and response, okay? So I, I'm going to ask you all to do a little responding with me this morning. Is that okay? Absolutely. Can I hear you all? Yes. All right. So it's my understanding that your lecture theme for this year centers around uh, student consciousness and being accountable for your own educational pursuits. But first, uh, in order for you to be conscious and accountable, you've got to first know uh, why you're here. And so I want you, I want you to turn to the person next to you and I want you to ask them, what are you doing here? <laughs> turn to the person next to you and ask them, what are you doing here? Okay? Now I want you to turn to the, turn to the person that you just spoke to and I want you to tell them, Dr. Faison has the answer. Now I want you to tell them, say it again, say Dr. Faison has the answer. Now I want you to tell them that you are here to earn a degree. I want you to say it loud. Come on now, turn up. I need y'all, y'all be turned up for everything else now. I want you to say it loud. You are here to earn a degree. Thank you. Now from here on out during this lecture, when I ask you, what are you doing here? I want you to respond by saying, I'm here to earn Y'all got to do better than that. Y'all prolong in the process. Y'all got to cooperate with me. Why are you here? To earn a degree. There we go. You are here to earn a degree. Why are you here? To earn a degree. I wanted you to make that declaration today, that you are here to earn a degree. I don't want you to be modest or shy about declaring that. I don't want you to fear saying it out loud. I don't want you to whisper it or to say it to yourself. I don't want you to be timid about it. I don't want you to say it. I want you to say it out loud to yourselves daily. I'm here to earn a degree. 
I want you to put it in your psyche. I want you to put it down in your spirit. I want you to make a faith statement out of it. I'm here to earn a degree. Now the question, why are you here, assumes and infers some things. It assumes that you came here from somewhere else. Is anybody here actually from ASU? No, 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 of course not. But it also assumes that you will not remain here permanently. Albany State is a territory of preparation for the rest of your life, of what the rest of your life will become. Albany State is an environment of transformation whereby you hone in on your skill set and your intellect. Albany State is a fertile ground by which the potentiality that God has placed in you can come forth. Albany State is a greenhouse where what's promising in you can be activated and shaped. The inference is that since you have come to, a such, to such a place as Albany State, that you have come for what it ultimately urges you to attain, and that's a degree. So why are you here? Now when you declare what your intentions are for being here, you invite in all the positive forces and positive spirits to help you get it. And so that's why it's important for you to declare it daily. Again, why are you here? Now when you don't say it, you allow the negative spirits and persons to stay around to distract you and, de and detour you from your stated purpose. So you must set the proper aura around you. At Virginia Union, we call it setting the atmosphere. And as my mother would say in her apostolic Christian faith vernacular, you must command and take authority of your atmosphere. You must set the force field around your life. Now since you know exactly, specifically, and particularly now why you are here, let me hear your response again. Why are you here? Sorry. Now this may come as no shock or surprise, but it will be easy to spot what you are not here for. Let me say that one more time. Now that you know what you're here for, which is to... Y'all trailing off on me. Why are you here? Sorry. All right. So again, this may come as no shock or surprise for you but it will be easy to spot, or should be easy to spot, what you're not here for. You are not here to fail. You're not here to flunk, you're not here to freelance. You're not here to be famous in the dorm. You're not here to fight anybody or fuss with anybody. You're not here to start a family or father children. Let me say that one more time. You're not here to start a family or father or mother for that matter, children. You're not here to be foolish or to fool yourself. You're not here to be fly, you're not here to frolic, you're not here to fall, flop, or be a follower. You're not here on false pretenses. You're not here to destroy the facilities or disrespect the faculty or staff. You're not here just to be regular or average, because at the, as the great poet laureate of the 21st century, AKA Mr. Clifford Harris, AKA T, I would say, here at, ES, at ASU, we don't want no mediocre. So again, my emerging ASU scholars, you are here to earn a degree. Why are you here? To earn a degree. And if you stay focused, you will flourish and finish. However, you must recognize and admit that you have not gotten where you are trying to get yet. Yes, your journey has just begun. You have not accomplished what you set out to accomplish yet. You have, attained, you have not attained what you have set out to attain yet. You have not achieved what you set out to achieve yet. Perhaps you're in your freshman year. Perhaps you're a sophomore or a junior or a senior, but as long as you are designated as such, you have not earned what it is that you're trying to earn. So in order for you to earn it, you may well have to cut loose mentally and perhaps even physically from the things in your past that would prevent you from acquiring what awaits you in your future. Let me say that one more time. You may well have to cut loose mentally and perhaps even physically from the things in your past that would prevent you from acquiring what awaits you in your future. Coming to college represents an opportunity to start a new chapter in your life story. It's a fresh start. You can in invent yourself or reinvent yourself here at Albany State University for the pen that's writing the story of your life is in your hand. So you can correct some things that may have been past hindrances. You can eliminate the impact that some bad experiences had on you or reverse the energy of that impact so that you are in drive and not in reverse. 
Every new school year is a new beginning. Every new semester is a new beginning. Every new day is a new beginning. So be better this year than you were last year. You've got to let go of what will keep you from getting to where you're going. Sometimes you may very well have to let him go. I'm going to say it again. You very well may have to let him go. You may have to let her go. Let them go. Let it go. Why are you here? So not only do you have to forget those things which are behind you, you must reach for the things which are before you. Reach reminds you of the direction you're heading in. You're not here to go backwards, but forward. You were made to go forward. Your whole physical contract is, is designed to move forward. Your brain is in the front of your head. Your eyes see forward. Your nose smells forward. Your ears hear sound coming towards them. Your mouth speaks forward. Your knees bend forward. Your feet point forward. When you step forth, you are balanced. When you step backwards, you're unbalanced. This is a metaphor for your successful walk in life. Don't walk backwards or you'll lose ground. You'll stumble and fall. Don't walk backwards. Because when you walk backwards, you're being led by what's behind you. There's nothing behind you but what's behind you. And you don't want what's behind you to get out in front of you. So let your behind stay behind. Because why are you here? Come on. Why are you here? You have to press for it. You have to wrestle for it. You have to pursue it. You have to earn it. You have to press toward the mark of the high calling. And that's what we all should strive for. High marks. High marks in the classroom. High marks in your character. You see, you must not bypass character. You must not bypass character in the pursuit of success. Because if you do, it does you no good to be great at what you do, but terrible at who you are. High marks in your courage. High marks in your service to others. And if you do this, you will arrive at why you are here. And when you arrive at why you're here, you can leave here with what you came to get. Then you can look forward to what's next. Why are you here? You have to strive for it. So let nothing you can control stand in your way of earning your degree. Your future is depending on you. The world is counting on it. Your people are hoping for it. Your church is praying for you. Your neighborhood is praying for you. Your neighborhood is banking on it. Your family is banking on it. So don't be a disappointment. Have faith in you and God, and you will arrive at your destination. For there are some robing ceremonies that you need and that we all expect each and every one of you all to participate in. Yes, indeed, there may be a long white robing ceremony, but that's not the one we're talking about this morning. Of course, there's only one of those. But you may be in several long black robe ceremonies. And for that, I want you to get ready. I want you to be ready to put on that graduation robe for your day is coming. It'll be here in a moment. Because when you put on this robe, you can be like Rich Homie Kwan and you really feel like the man when you walk through. When you turn that tassel and grow across that stage, having pressed forward and meeting the mark and earn your degree on that day, you ain't studying what they saying when you walk through. So work hard, be diligent, be consistent, keep pressing, keep pushing, and that day will be here before you know it. So again, I want to hear you declare it emphatically one more time. Why are you here? Degree. Well, then earn it. Earn it. Earn it. Earn it. Earn it. Now, in closing, I must also admonish you to use your time wisely. Don't waste time. To paraphrase the words of the great educator, sociologist, and social activist, Dr. Benjamin Elijah Mays, we, only, we have only just a minute, only 60 seconds in it, forced upon us, can't refuse it, didn't seek it, didn't choose it, but it's up to each of us to use it. We must suffer if we lose it, give account if we abuse it, just a tiny little minute, but an eternity is in it. Use it wisely. You are young and brilliant, and you have your entire collegiate lives ahead of you. And each of you will spend your life doing something, or maybe a host of things, but please do not just spend your life. Make it count. And so the last thing that I'm going to impart with you all this morning is I want to share with you what I consider the ABCs of college life. I share this with my students at Virginia Union, and of course, if I'm sharing it with them, I have to share it with my family. 
And it's my understanding that, that this class of 2018 that you all kind of have an affinity for acronyms. Uh, and so I'm going to use uh, uh, some acronyms in giving you all these ABCs of life. You must take these ABCs with you and keep them close by your side throughout your journey. I want you to first take the A and accept the challenge. B, believe in yourselves and C, convert your thoughts into hopes. I want you to use the D and be determined to convert your hopes into dreams. You should E, expect some obstacles during your journey, and F, fight while being faithful to finish the course. You must G, get God on your side, and H, walk humbly with an unquenching thirst for excellence and high achievement. You should I, inspire someone else, and J, take joy in your journey. You must K, keep keeping on, and L, be a leader. You should M, make every day count, and N, never give up. You must O, overcome your obstacles, and P, personify a Holly model of leadership. You must Q, quit quitting, and R, run the race with patience. You must S, strive on, while T, trusting in your faith. You must U, use your talents, and V, value your time. You must W, wait for understanding, and X, x-ray your own decisions and lifestyles. You should Y, yearn to achieve all that you seek, and Z, be zealous when reaching the top. Yes, here at Albany State University, you can reach the top, and we are collectively committed to seeing that you reach your very highest potential. So I beseech you today to take your rightful place in becoming a great part of our outstanding legacy of greatness. Remember, God has given us two ends in life. One to sit on and one to think with. Our success in life depends on which end we use the most. ASU class of 2018, heads you win, tails you lose. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Faison. Do we have any questions from the floor? Well, good morning. Good morning. Um, I was wondering, were there any obstacles? Can, you, can you? I want you to give me your name. Oh, okay. And I want you to give me your classification. Oh well, my name is Yanni Jenkins, okay. and I'm a freshman. Okay. Um, were there any obstacles you had to overcome to get where you are now? Of course, a lot. Um, obstacles are are, are an, 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 an inevitable part of life. You're going to face obstacles. Um, you know. I, I'll share this with you. Um, when I was at the University of Georgia, I had significant obstacles. Um, when I went to UGA uh, in 2002, uh, I was one of only nine African American students that was in my first year law class. Only three of us graduated. That was just in 2002. So I mean, it's not like that was you know light years ago. Um, and so um, you're going to face obstacles. Um, but I think the key is that you work hard. Be diligent and always, always keep your faith in, in, in God and, and, and know that, that, that um, Albany State, for one, has prepared you to be where you are um, and, and, and your parents in this community um, will prepare you. But you've got, you've got to do your part. You've got to make sure that you are engaged and you've got to make sure that you um, are consistent with the things that you know uh, to do. Um, so, you know, again, you know, obstacles are inevitable, but, but it's how we respond to those obstacles um, that, that really makes the difference. I remember there's a quote that I like to live by that Martin Luther King talks about. He says, the greatest measure of a man is not where that person stands when everything is going well, but where that person stands in times of controversy um, and, and, and in times of obstacles. So, you know, Obstacles are going, to, are going to be a part of your experience. I'm sure that you're facing them already as freshman students. Uh, the transformation is, 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 is in itself an obstacle, and it comes with a, a host of obstacles. But you're standing looking at someone that's been in your seat, that's faced the obstacles of having to make the transformation and, and the transition um, from high school to college and then matriculate uh, successfully through the process, and you can do it. That's what I want to let you all know is that you can do it uh, because I'm a living testimony. And Ms. Williams is a living testimony. All of us have been through this, this, this gamut uh, of, of Albany State University, and, and, and it can happen. Uh, and so I hope that answers your question.
Anyone else? How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Is it? Can y'all hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Question for you. Well, me being a um, employee of the university, graduate of Auburn State University, fighting the same fight that you're fighting, I get it. What advice would you give these students in the room to overcome themselves mm. and pull that accountability factor in? Because it's, you know, like I know, peer pressure is very real. And it sounds trivial to sit in a room full of adults to talk about peer pressure, but it's relevant at 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, right. even in your professional career. Right. How would you suggest them overcoming that aspect to, I guess, fulfill their destiny? That's a great question. Of course, there, 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 are, there are multiple kind of ways that you can answer that, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attempt to do it this way. For you all as students, peer pressure is an inevitable part of life. Um, as the gentleman mentioned, you're going to face that throughout your career. Um, you know, whether you're here at Albany State, whether you go someplace else, as you begin to go into the working world. But what it is that you've got to ask yourself is, where is it that I want to be? I surround myself with people. When I was a student, I think Mrs. Williams can tell you, other people can tell you, I surrounded myself with people who either have been where I want to go or are at least going where I say I want to go. Because I tell you, the reality is that many of you all 18, 19 years old right now, I wish that I could tell you that all of you all, I'm going to see you 2018 while I cross the stage. But some of you all, they may, they, they may have done this during orientation, I don't know if they still do it, but they look to your left, look to your right, somebody's not going to make it. You don't want that someone to be you. So it's important now that you align yourselves with positive people. I can't tell you, at my university, at Virginia Union, I tell my students the same thing. You've got to align yourselves, and, and now that you, you, you're adults, you're 18, you, you know, because y'all are quick to say, I'm grown. Don't tell me this, don't tell me that I'm grown. Well, 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 act grown. Grown people have to be responsible for their own decisions. You have to, you have to act responsibly. You have to understand that everything that you do has a consequence. That's one of the key things. I don't care, and, and it can be that can be in a positive context, it can be in a negative context. If you study and you go to class and you do those things, the consequence is going to be success, it's going to be good grades. But if you, if, if, if you do negative things, the consequence is going to be negativity. So think about, uh, that's one of the things that I really, really want to impart to you all this morning. Before you make a decision, just take a second and pause and think about it. I work as, as, a, as an administrator now, but formerly I was a state prosecutor. I was a drug prosecutor. I prosecuted drugs all up and down I-75, coming from Miami, going back and forth. I can't tell you how many young people that look just like you all, just matter of fact, the courtroom is essentially filled with the demographic of what this crowd looks like, with the exception of the court reporter, the judge, and usually the prosecutor, but because I was there, that was a little different. And oftentimes when I'm sitting across the aisle from the person that I was prosecuting, and I'm meeting with the mother and the father, and they're crying. And many, many times, these were college students. Going to spring break, coming back, they got pulled over. You got a little weed in the car. You got MDM ecstasy pills. You got this, you got that. Y'all know, know I'm telling the truth. And then you're sitting across the table from me, and my job, is not to, see Mrs. Williams gonna work with you. Dr. Shelton's gonna work with you. Ms. Hill is gonna work with you. That's their job. That's not my job as a prosecutor. My, my job is predicated upon locking you up. If I don't have a high uh, uh, prosecution percentage rate, I lose my job. That's my job. And so what I try to tell young people is think, think. Take a moment, just take a moment before you step out and make that particular decision, whatever it is, think, think. Think about the consequence of this particular action. How is this gonna affect me? How is this gonna affect my family? How is this gonna affect my little brother or my little sister? 
How is this going to affect my mom, my dad? How, how is this going to impact my life? How many of you all know that if you have a, a, a felony, you can't receive federal financial aid? Did you know that? Did you all know that? You get a felony conviction, you can't receive financial aid. So then it's a vicious cycle. And I can go on and on. I know I'm probably running out of time. But, 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 but it's a vicious cycle because then you can't get federal financial aid. So you can't go to school. You can't get a degree. And so what are you left with? You stuck. You stuck like Chuck. So I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Faison. And I'm always excited when able to get some of my colleagues back to campus and be able to impart on our students the same stuff I try to tell them daily. But it's always good Keep to doing. hear a fresh perspective. And I know you're the with those bulldogs over there in Athens. Yeah. I know yeah. you're there in Richmond gallivanting with those pampers. But I was here for homecoming. You were absolutely. Uh, I was here. So it's always good to know you can come back and be refreshed That's right. and be amongst the Rams. That's right. So I normally deem the speakers honorary Rams when they come and speak, but I'm so glad mm -mm. to be able to just say welcome home. Thank you. Thank and you. So thank I'll you. give you this as just a token of our oh, gratitude and just thank you for thank sharing you with so us much. and giving so much for the food this morning. You. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to yield the microphone to our esteemed director of the Center for Teaching, Learning, and Scholarship, Dr. Melvin A. Shelton. He's going to bring closing remarks, and we're going to close our program in the usual manner with the ASU alma mater. So get your spirit hats on. My class, I want you to be singing enthusiastically. <laughs> I want to hear your melodious voices. All verses, all, all the words. words. All verses. And at the close of the program, my class, you can meet me here in the corner. And if there's anyone who'd like to dialogue or chat with Dr. Faison 101, you can feel free to do so uh, at that time. Thank you. What time is it? 1042. Time is a us, and I promise I won't be long. But I would be remiss if I didn't ask you, do this for me. I want you to stand on your feet and show appreciation to this golden round. This oh, is a wow. testimony this morning, and a testimony. Thank you. 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 When Dr. Faison was going through those ABCs, I really wanted to just throw out everything I have and go back and enroll in school as a freshman again because you made it exciting. And I'm so glad that you told us what we need to hear. Didn't he lay it on the line, human beings? Yes, rather than what we like to hear. Uh, this is the last, uh, this is the last speaker for this semester. And we could not have picked a better one. I'm going to see if we can't get you back for a commencement speech and give the same one. Thank you so much. Just one or two things. Uh, I do want to thank uh, his mother and wife for allowing us to, uh, to have him for just a few moments. I just want to remind us of something that's very important. And don't forget why you are here. Why are you here? Yes, yes. Yeah. And the question that follows is, are you going to do it? Please, I beg of you, do it. You are so much better off. And so there's a lot to be said. Uh, the speech has been given, and I don't want to give a speech, and time is upon us. But I do want to remind us that uh, we're coming up on the close of this thing. Uh, we break next Tuesday for Thanksgiving, and when we come back, I think it's a mad dash to the finish line. I believe by my count, there are eight days left in the semester. <coughs> so I beg of you, in preparation, you should be preparing for your finals now if you're going to have the positive to Dr. Faison's question, what are you here for? That means you've got to pass these courses. The permeating theme that runs through our ASU 1201 Foundations of College Success class 
is student success. And that's what he talked about here today. I am so overjoyed that you are here today. When we return after Thanksgiving, it's a mad dash to the finish line, a couple of things you need to be doing now. Make sure you check on your financial aid for next semester. That's right. If you're not a felon. <laughs> I got that from him. If you're not a felon, please do that. Uh, we have issues with crowds at financial aid, and we found that some of the problem is not in the financial aid office, but it is in us. Uh, we have complete one third, one quarter, one eighth complete our forms. We put incorrect information on the forms, and then we turn them in late. So we've got to get our act together so that we can beat and browbeat financial aid to have their act together. But we have to do it first. So the president has asked that we remind our students to check on their financial aid and study for your finals. And I'm going to get out of the way, Miss. Uh, the evaluations that uh, you have for the series, the lecture series, please fill those out and leave them with one of the honor students dressed in, I'm going to say that's old gold and white. Or just leave them uh, near the nearest chair to the exit area and we'll get them. Students, we thank you so much for all that you do. Just keep doing it. Uh, remember what Dr. Faison said about uh, authority, respect for authority, uh, act grown if you think you're grown. And so I think we, is that it? We know about uh, financial aid, we know finals. We have thanked uh, our superlative guest and speaker and his family. The only thing I can think of is uh, the alma mater. We're going to sing it just like we are golden ram. Do we stand? And we'll sing it. Usually, uh, Mrs. Williams would get someone to come up and lead and give them a uh, booby prize if they don't do well and a nice prize I'll if they it. do well. I'll lead it. But I'll lead it. I'll lead it. I, I'll lead it. I don't want to lead it. I'll lead it. Uh, I'll lead it. I'll lead it. Dr. Faison, let's lead I'll it together. Lead it. Let's give them a do man. <laughs> All right. We'll lead it together. On three. One, two, three. All in these days. Success to thee, we give praises above all the rest. Come down a little bit. Thy jubilant colors of blue and gold will ever honor and ever behold. Thy name is an anchor upon life sea. When sailing we put it. our trust in thee. Come on, Golden Ram. The dear school, we see all the best. To thee we give praises above all the rest. Please be safe and enjoy the Thanksgiving break. We are dismissed. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay.